uh, Braves. Not going to happen. All right. Let's go to the NBA. Let's review, folks, what we've seen this weekend, kind of what we got coming up, what we think. What we've seen in the NBA is a load of horse crap <laughs> out of the referees. <laughs> See, if Chris, if you're watching, I'm not the only one that thinks that. Bunch of horse crap. Thank you, Chris. Go Braves. Yes, absolutely. <sighs> but for the NBA, it's a load of horse crap. I tried to tell y'all that they do that. Um and basketball is an easy sport to ref that way. Uh, again, um, how are Anthony you going Davis to go? And took more free throws than than they had missed shots for the second yeah. game in a row after complaining to the refs. And w- when you have more free throws than than the other team does, they, I mean, those two people had more free throws than the whole Nuggets team, Hunter. <laughs> I mean, what do you do about that? Like, that's a, listen, uh, it, and you know they argue they're like, oh well, technically. LeBron gets fouled every time he drives to the lane. I'm like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? LeBron fouls, fouls half the time when he drives to the lane. It's it's not fair. I mean, what? It, it's yes. not fair to defenders at all the way he's refed because the point of playing defense is to move your feet and, and get, to stay in front and of and him. to get in front of someone. But if you, that person that you're allowed that you're getting in front of is Drops allowed his, to drop run, his shoulder, basically run through you. Mm-hmm. You're right. He creates the contact. In every basketball game or anything I've ever played, whoever creates the contact is supposed to be the one who is the foul called on. But they allow offensive offensive players to create contact, whether it's on right. the shot or on the drive. And I tried to tell Terry Saturday, Jason Tatum's one of the worst I've ever seen. Well, he uses that left off. arm a lot. He literally will will stiff arm defenders, and the refs allow that. But that's, they, that's wild. It's because me. they still want these hundred and twenty to hundred and twenty five point games. I guess they want they want. And I, I was talking to a guy last night, can't remember his name, but he he was been an assistant coach or of defenses and offenses in, at, at football levels across the country. Uh, I was talking about a restaurant, was talking to him, and he agreed with me when I said a lot of these leagues, they're favoring offenses way more than they are defense. It's like it's yeah. everything has been set up against the defense just to make their job harder, if not almost impossible. It, and uh-huh. you see the same exact thing on the offensive side, or like or in the basketball sense. I know I was talking just football with him, but the basketball sense at the same time. I mean, you've got these guys, ball is out of their hands, man, and they're coming down. And I'm not talking about the guy getting in their landing zone because that is dangerous. They come down, mm-hmm. roll an ankle or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking like ball is out. It's not even going to affect the shot, and they clip him. They clip like they clip like his forearm. Mm-hmm. Now, it's different if the ball is still in his hands, he's coming for the follow-through, and I just do this. And just smack the hell out of his arm while the ball's in yeah. his hand. That ball is out, it's traveling, and the guy still will just, you know, maybe get a fingertip, you know, get him on the forearm, and they'll just call a foul. Or you got the guys where they're away from the ball and they touch him a little bit. That's a foul. Mm-hmm. You fart on him, that's a foul. Okay, you breathe on him wrong, that's a foul. The, the referees have almost been conditioned to be quick-whistled. As soon as you can, stop the play. As soon as you can, stop the play. Let them run, let them run, do their three-point shots, three-point line to three-point line. But anytime time they try to go inside, you got to blow the whistle. I don't know. I just I, – so, I hate what – I love watching basketball, but I hate what basketball has become. Right. See, one of the things and the reason I don't like about – the way they ref LeBron is they kind of did that with Shaq too, which I understand. You know, if you're strong, if you go through people, Hunter, like you can't, Andrew, if, you can't penalize him for strength. Right. If I go up and, and I dunk it and you slap my arms or, or foul me and I go through you, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But when Shaq and LeBron go through the defenders' bodies, that's a foul on them, and they don't like calling it that much or won't call it that much, and that's what's unfair to the defender is where. It, and it's not a skill to me. Mm-hmm. It's not a skill. Running over someone is not a skill. It's you, you're running into them and making the refs make a call. Mm-hmm. And, and they complained about the the Clippers. Remember, complained about Jokic trying to make the refs make a call. And that's what LeBron does when he runs over someone. So, and that's why when, when fans, the people that don't aren't the LeBron sexuals, will say his movie is run over you after you're thrown to the floor. Then I'll shoot a wide up. open shot. Yeah. Kobe, Jordan, all the other guys, they used their skill to take the foul, bounce off, and get the shot off or, or, or go. They never went through someone, like, causing 
the 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 foul, and that's what's so weird. You know, about you hear the people you hear people still say the same thing right now. Like it's not a skill. Like to me. T- when they talk about Giannis, they're like, I really can't call Giannis a skill player because all he does is run over people. And I keep telling people this, and and they just don't want to give me credit because they don't want to admit it. The honest is baby LeBron. Mm-hmm. When when LeBron got into the league and didn't have the jump shot that he has now and maybe didn't have quite as good as ball handling mm-hmm. skills that he has now, LeBron James was a freight train coming down the coming down the lane. All right. And so they're, they're reffing him like they did Shaq, and, and this is what I meant by like the skill thing. I'm not saying LeBron don't have skills or Shaq don't have skills. What I'm saying is David Robinson had more. Patrick Ewing had more. Kim Olajuwon had more. Those centers, they had more skills, but he was bigger and stronger. Mm-hmm. Same thing with LeBron. That people are bragging about him Ding up Jamal Murray. How big is Jamal Murray? Jamal Murray's like six. Three, and in six, four. fact, the, the, as far as the defense goes, didn't he smack the shit out of him on that uh, one? The, and they didn't the, the drive, drive to the lane. Yes. Yeah, the, yes. That now he fouled the shit out of and him. They, and they, and they're like, what a great play by LeBron. And Mark Jackson's like, well, he slapped his hands. Yeah, he said, yeah. Mark Jackson said, no, that's a foul. But that's a foul. Jamal Murray is six foot four. Being bigger or Jamal Murray is six foot is not, four. Is LeBron not, James is six foot nine. Right. I hope it's he not can guard a, him. It's not a skill. Um, and and, and I, Shaq won four, but three of them were with Kobe, and one of them was with Wade. At all points in time, those were probably the top two shooting guards in the NBA. That was still a young Wade. While they, he did while it while they were while he was playing with them, was that those were the top top shooting guards in the NBA? So it's not like. He just went there and did it by himself. I would take a dunk, and I, I want someone more skilled uh, <laughs> it, than all that. But um, so the as far as the Nuggets go, Hunter, um, good and bad things. It's good when you come back from three one. It's good when mm-hmm. you, you if that's not a problem. What's bad about their team this year? They have they're starting small forward, and nobody oh, ever yeah. talks about yeah. That. Will Barton. Barton? He averaged sixteen points a game. So let's say if Barton gets to play and he's out there. That moves somebody to the bench with less minutes. Maybe it is that Paul Millsap minutes that are, aren't getting anything. Damn. What if Bobo, those are empty? You talk about empty calories. Those are empty minutes. What if Bobo does get his game together and actually give him playing time? Like if you got two people, Bo can score, and then you add Barton on the floor at the same time with Jokic and Murray Hunter. We're talking, mm-hmm. and, and then Jeremy Grant. You're talking something different than having Gary Harris and Paul Millsap out there. So I think they've got a future to look at. Uh, Grant's going to be a free agent, though. Uh, they'll have to decide on him. Uh, really athletic player. Um, uh, you can't rely on him offensively, but he, he he gets dunks and stuff in transition that are really, really right. good. Um, as I, far, how about this? The Lakers, Hunter, will will face an eight seed. Mm-hmm. Was Houston four or five? Houston was five. They were lower than the... Thunder. Eight, five, three, and a five. Mm-hmm. If they win this championship, LeBron will win a championship without having to play a one or two seed <laughs> and, not, time. and not playing a single road game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My takeaway from what I saw the Nuggets do against Lakers is somebody... They like, and I'll say I just this. Even foul calls. Nah, well, here's, and then the, we'll well, here's the thing. How how they that's did. and that's not where I'm going. <laughs> you know, Chris Nelson makes a good point. I thank you, Chris, obviously for watching us and commenting us with us as well. But he made a good point. They could be dangerous the next few years if they have a good core because offensively they can be a threat. Michael Porter Jr. People forget it's just a rookie. He's going to get better. I mean, he's just going to get better once he gets acclimated to the pro game and the coach starts to believe in him a little bit more. He'll stay good. Jamal Murray is still a baby in the league. He'll be good. Uh, Gary Harris, they keep him. Imagine if they get a fully healthy Gary Harris coming into these playoffs. He played he, decent late. He was but He was on and off as well. Morris, um, the biggest problem, obviously, that was glaring was the power forward spot needed to be addressed. If Paul Millsap is your starting power forward at this time of the year, there's a problem. Will Barton going forward will be great. So if they can keep the core together, it's fine. But somebody has got to look at Jokic and say, Jokic, listen, Joker, whatever you want to call him, Nikola, I don't give a damn. (laughs) Just look at him and call him by a name and say, look, you are fundamentally gifted. You are a big Mr. Fundamental right now. But if you don't get in the gym and learn to lift some damn weights so them boys can quit pushing you around underneath the basket, 
so you can get some rebounds. Because here's the problem that I have with Jokic, and it's not that he is fundamentally sound. I love watching fundamental big men. I used to always enjoy watching Tim Duncan in his later years just because even when he could hardly move, he could still score 15 to 20 points if he wanted to. But Jokic cannot jump higher than maybe three to four inches off the ground. (laughs) So when he would try and just one-arm body block Anthony Davis so he could get the other hand up there, he wasn't even jumping up to grab the ball because he Mm. knows he can't out-jump any of these other power forwards and centers. Like, he's good, but this is where, to me, you have to find another big that might be able to stretch the floor like Paul Millsap does. They have it in bowl bowl, but they won't use it. So until they, I'll give credit to you here, Kevin. This is where I, the whole time I was like, you need size down there and a little bit of athleticism. Paul Millsap <laughs> is not athletic at this time in his career. He was at one point, but not this time in his career. Jokic is not athletic. He is just fundamentally sound. They got their asses handed to them on the boards. I remember the tweet I sent out. I think it was after game three or four. I said the Nuggets have officially given up on rebounding. Nobody is underneath the basket when it comes to putting up, getting rebounds on the defensive side of the ball or the offensive side of the ball. Because they know they just can't bang with the sizes of Dwight, JaVale, LeBron when he's down there. Even though he's 6'9", we still know he's an athletic freak. Anthony Davis when he's down there getting the boards. So if the... If the Nuggets could get another guy that can help secure second-chance opportunities for them underneath the basket and a defensive rebounder, I believe, seriously, they could be dangerous just going forward. They seriously do. They seriously could be going forward. Like, just they would be a really dangerous team out west because think about it. Clippers seem to be having some internal problems. Um, That's pretty major that they'll have to just deal with going forward. Hmm. Uh, The Lakers are old. I don't think people realize after this, a lot of these guys are on this team one-year deals. They're old. So next year, you might have a completely different LeBron James built Lakers team. I'm not, I'm not putting this on the front office. LeBron James builds these teams. Let's not be. Let's not question that. Golden State will be back, hopefully. But I, to me, the D- Denver's, Denver's has a window, a title window. They always say, well, what's their window? How long can they do it? They got a window. And right now, while their young guys are still good, athletic, and they can still play at a high level, their window is still wide open. But it's going to start to shrink and shrink just after every year. So. Yeah, she's only 25. Um, Murray's, Murray's a baby. 24. Uh, and, and, and Michael Bull, Porter Jr. Bull's 22. And, and, MPJ is, he's, and MPJ only played one year of college, so he might be like 19. Here's the thing you got to worry about as far as out west is – Will if the Lakers do win it, will we have a plethora of stars trying to jump ship and play for the Lakers again next year? Because the Lakers are bad. And, Lakers and, are bad. And will this be the beginning of a Michael Porter's twenty two? I mean, they're babies. Will LeBron get back to back because of that? And will he ever get a three peat? Um, so we'll, we'll, questions about that. That'll be something to watch going forward. But like that was my takeaway. You know, from the Lakers Denver series. Obviously, now the Lakers are in the finals, but if uh, Denver has all of the talent that the Lakers don't want to see going forward, if they stay old, if we're in the if we're in the uh, finals right now, and it's Lakers versus the Brooklyn Nets with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, how are you feeling about that as opposed to Miami? I don't think this is a bad as match a, as bad of a matchup as people think. It I think is, Miami though. can win it. I think Miami can. I'm not going to bet the house on I it. I just, but I don't think what I've seen is I don't believe that the Lakers are as good as that they've played and are playing. I don't think they're the best team. They're just not a team to me. Um, they're LeBron and AD, and everybody else has to show up. Listen, they ha- like they. They have that to That Nuggets show up. series will end up, we're going to be watching a 30 for 30 one day from it in about 10 years, talking about who, whichever ref that was, fixed, that, fixed those series and the way they did the Lakers. Well, they definitely, the way the, the Lakers did the Kings and the Lakers did the Trailblazers. I mean, I don't know about in the early 2000s. I don't know about if they fixed the last game of this series, but the second to last game of that series, the get where they called the league office yeah, the, the day first before. The first one was, too. I, yeah. I mentioned that one, and that next to last one were, were so awful. So they were, it was just, mm. It was just awful. It was, like, it was just, bad. You just can't, 
the, the, the and calls look, were off. I'm glad really that weird. a lot of major media markets kind of took, they kind of saw that and kind of called it out. They said, you don't, you don't think it's weird that the league – just got a call from the Lakers complaining about LeBron, and then the next game, he literally went to the line like 14 times. <laughs> like, the, you think that was just a coincidence? 14 times. You think that was just a coincidence? Like, come on now. Or, or at least had 14 shots. Went there probably seven times. But He missed 11 shots and got 14 free throws on 11 missed shots. He made more than what he would have made if he hit those. <laughs> If well, that is if Not he hit. That is right. if he hit all fourteen. We know he's a bad free throw shooter. But looking, but I'll say this. So that was my thoughts on the Lakers Nuggets game. My thoughts on the Miami Boston game was, as of right now, what really you want to know what it was? Seriously, that I don't think anybody's really going to give me much credit. But it was the youth thing still for the Boston Celtics. I think it is their youth, uh, Jimmy. And all them boys in Miami, a lot of them had played for a certain. Uh, they are veterans. Jay Crowder, is a Jay Crowder is a veteran. And, Andre Iguodala. Andre Iguodala is a veteran. Um, Bam even has been in the league at least four years now. Jason Tatum's been here for like a second. Does Boston trade Kimba? I don't know if they trade Kimba. Um, if I was them, I would not trade Kimba. I would just ride into next season because he, to me, he makes them harder regular season to guard. But in the mm-hmm. postseason. They, I don't even. I just don't like their offense with him. Hunter. I'm just. But to I, me, he, he doesn't work. My takeaway is this: Boston got him this year, but going forward, Terry, if you listen to this, and I'll probably tell you Saturday, you you just you can be happy because I think Boston in the next year or two will be making a finals appearance. If they keep their, it's the same thing with if <laughs> if Denver could keep their core together. Got to beat the Durantula first. Will Kyrie sabotage this I team too? Who, as long as he's healthy, he's winning the whatever conference. But I don't know if he is. Listen, and don't get me wrong, I love watching Kevin Durant too. But Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they can both get you twenty-five, if not thirty, a night. Don't I? I just don't see anything that's missing from this Boston Celtics team other than experience. That's the only. That's the one thing that they just don't have. Can they score? Yes. Can they rebound? Yes. Can they play defense when they want to? Yes. What's missing? They're all still babies. And I, I think, think about and think about it. Kimba had never been in a conference finals anyways. That was the first time. Did Tyler there. Hero not kick Kimba Walker's ass. Tyler Hero is, is played off very bench, well. He got more points, one more rebound, one assist mm-hmm. than Kimba did off the bench. Now he has played very well. I have been very I, impressed with what I, I saw. I'm with just because he wasn't even that. He was not even that impressive while at Kentucky. I, I wouldn't want Kimba leading the team in scoring, but I would want him dribbling the damn basketball up. Mm-hmm. And it is amazing to me that they let Tatum and Brown do that instead of Kimba Walker. What's the point of trading for Kimba Walker if you don't want him to handle the basketball? That's the best thing he does. Like, we can get 20 other point guards to stand in the corner and shoot threes. Right. And then Kimba can't. is isn't a great defender. And Tyler Hero showed it. He took it straight at his ass. But Tyler Hero's Drogic. bigger than Kim- Kimba. All of them took They're it. They're all Kimba. bigger than Kimba. All they have to do is back it. If you get Kimba off of like a pick and roll where he has to guard the ball handler and he gets picked, obviously he's not going to be able to recover because he won't be big enough to do a chase down block. But then also what I think is going to be the problem as well is say that it is the pick and roll and, and the ball handler gives it off to the big man. Well, what's what? And the big man's at the top of the key, like they do a lot of times now with the Nuggets or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Who? What's going to prevent Gore, Drogic, or Hero, or Butler, anybody that's being guarded by Kimba, from just posting him up? You've got like a four or five inch height difference on the guy. So, you know, going into this series, um, and I don't think that, I don't know about what Chris just said. Here's the thing that um, here's about the, the Miami thing. Here, uh, so the matchup with the Lakers. Yes. 